estar. Vamos a grabar aquí, vamos a empezar hoy. Muy buenos días, buenos días a todos. Y bien, oh, Suwai, qué foto más linda. What a gorgeous, oh, you, you and Miguel have some of the prettiest pictures for your backgrounds. Ok, uh, muy bien. Uh, bueno, vamos a empezar porque hoy es el, uh, la última clase del verano. Today is the last class of summer session. I do want to share with you a page to show you because I know this had come up. So I was planning to talk, take the first few minutes, maybe no more than three minutes to talk about some of the books you may want to choose because you may want to order something. TPRS books, this is what their, their website looks like. And, you know, I would say you could look at this page to decide and then figure out, do you want to order from them or do you want to try to see if you can find it on Amazon or a used bookstore? You may be able to find a real deal with a used bookstore from some high school student who had to read this and then like, let's resell this book. So, um, but sometimes it's kind of hard to tell uh, which story may be appropriate. And some of you are at very different levels. Some of you want a little more. So I'm going to kind of preview. Um, you know, Pobre Ama is where we started. That's a very, very simplistic book. This uh, Casa Dividida is more adult oriented. So I just want to point out some possibilities. It has quite a bit of past structure. And past structure that I think you want to wait a little bit. Uh, that would be maybe an interesting book to look at. It's about Families on the Divide during the Cuban Revolution on both sides of the uh, Cuban Revolution. But I think maybe wait on that, even if you feel like you're getting a, a hang of the past tense, because it's a little more advanced. Uh, Patricia Bala, California, super easy book. Uh, these Bart and Berto books are really kind of almost middle school, elementary oriented. I would say they might not be of great interest. Uh, El viaje de su vida has a lot of present tense. Viaje de su vida. I think Nora's got that one, right? See, si. uh, si. uh, that one would work. Um, uh, oh, I have read through this one about Picasso, El Muro de Picasso. Um, it's pretty simple level, casi se muere, almost died. That one probably is a pretty decent level. Um, what I want to point out are some, oh, here's our Frida Kahlo one, and, and uh, Diana's got a copy if somebody wants to borrow it, contact Diana or contact me, I could get you guys in touch. Um, some of these are going to be more... Viaje perdido, more advanced. Wait on that a little bit. Pobre Ana Bailo Tango is kind of an extension of Pobre Ana. This has a little bit of past tense, but not overwhelming. Actually, it has a fair amount of past tense. So if you're looking for something that has a little more past tense, but it's a beginner past tense, Pobre Ana Bailo Tango is something you may want to consider. Um, uh, pa, 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 pa. Oh, Donde Está Eduardo, I think would work. Oh, I've got to check the level on this. Donde Está Eduardo. Uh, oh, Novice Mid, past tense. That's going to have a fair amount of past tense. Maybe stay away from that one. Um, oh, advanced, advanced, advanced. That one you do not want to do. Um, ah, if you are looking for something that has... Uh, a little bit of past tense, baby past tense, but a good comparison of present and past. This Don Quixote el, uh, Ultimo Caballero is a good pick, potentially. This book is divided up. Um, it tells the story of Don Quixote, well, in a very simplistic way, of course, because it's really about yeah, the real Don Quixote is like this thick. <laughs> so it pairs down the story to the essentials, uh, but it is a beginner book. It, it has a present tense story of Don Quixote and the exact same Don Quixote story, exactly identical, but told in past tense. 
So it's, it's one of those dual split books. And this is pretty, it does a very good job of that. And it, it simplifies the story very, very much. And Don Quixote is actually uh, a great piece of literature as well. Um, it says we could act that out at our class party for Christmas. Oh, there you go. Because <laughs> it's meant to be acted out. Oh, the Don Quixote. Yeah. The Don, Don Quixote is, uh, uh, well, it, it's a whole cultural, it's a whole cultural issue. It's, uh, it's a story full of a lot of references that may puzzle you a little bit that have to do with, you know, the 15, 1600s. But uh, it, it does have the, the bigger issues of who's crazy and who's not who has the right values and who does not. It's one of those stories that goes into the deeper realm of that. Uh, this story, La Estatua, also, if you want to look at a story that's got some present and past mix, but it's kind of a baby past tense, La Estatua also works. Again, it is, I will warn you, a pretty surrealistic story. It will seem weird thematically because it is based on an actual short story by a very, very, very famous author from Mexico. And it is meant to be spooky, weird, and just, I mean, weird, weird, uh, weird story, but weird in a very fun way. Uh, oh, great story, but too advanced. Los, Los Bakers van a Peru, that probably is a pretty easy one. Uh, Niños Detectives is a pretty easy book, a little bit more middle school level, because I think that's who the protagonists are. Uh, Pobrecita Ama is probably, I would imagine, I don't believe I've read this one, but I'm pretty... Yeah, perfect for beginners. So this one, I think, is another sequel to Pobre Ama, and it's going to be a real easy book. Silbon, no, no, no. Let's see. Presente, presente. Um, presente. Problemas en Paraíso probably is a beginner book, I believe. I have not personally read this one. Intermediate low. Well, that will have some past tense. That will have a little bit. Um, I think all these books about sueños are uh, beginner books as well. Los sueños, some of these, again, have kind of indigenous... Mexican themes. Um, bum, 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 bum. Rebeldes de Texas tells the story of the Alamo. It's got some past, but it's not too terribly hard. So I do remember that one. That's maybe possible if you want something with past. Uh, this is the Peligro en la Amazonia is kind of interesting in that it is the kind of book where you build your own book. Uh, you can, you choose your story depending on the ending you choose, the way the cliffhanger you choose for the ending of one chapter, <laughs> it will take you to one part of, or, you know, a different stories, different things that may happen. Um, I believe who is that presente or no, it does not tell. I will try to look that one up. Actually, actually, I don't need to look that up. I believe I've got a copy of that one here at home. So I'll look and see if that is the right level. Um, but when you click on these, you can tell a lot of times, like Maria Miami, um, you know, they'll tell you if there are true beginner books so that if you're at that level and you need that, and they'll give you a little sample. So the reason for going here, I know Amazon sometimes gives you a sample, but TPRS Books does give you a sample of what the beginning pages look like. And if you start to recognize a lot of the, the I believe this one is a pretty simple story because I've seen a sample of that and it looked really, really elementary. So if you want a true beginner book, that's an easy level. Maria Miami would, would be that kind of a book as well. Um, um, ba, 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 ba. Oh, and here they're going to start to get into other stuff, I think. So if you want some suggestions, don't hesitate to 
uh, like give me a title and ask me and I can kind of check it out for you ahead of time. Because I know a lot of times folks are, are hesitant to pick a book unless they know it's the right level for them. But that TPRS website will help you and I will send you the link for it. It will help you with some samples to look at like two, three, four pages and see, is this too hard? Is it too easy? Kind of find your way for what's a good level for you. Or ask me straight out and I will do a little bit of research on it. Um, because we do not get back together until September 12th-ish, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a hiatus between the end of class and, and the next class. So, okay, a ver. Uh, Vamos a empezar. We're going to start today. Oi, today I want to uh, go through one new verb, which is going to be verse. We will do a little, uh, a little preview of verse with some examples, algunos ejemplos. And I do want to show you the prompts that we will mm -hmm. be using so that you can pull those up. If uh, these are the prompts that you see on the share screen, these are the prompts I had sent out to you ahead of time for conversation time using verse. Uh, and uh, we'll take any questions before you go off into small groups to talk about verse and how to use verse. And we're gonna have lots of examples before we step off into that. So verse is going to be our unusual or kind of odd uh, verbo reflexivo, our odd reflexive verb. And so you want to make sure you either pull this up on the computer or if you printed it out, grab that sheet of paper. So I want you to have a couple of minutes to go find that if you need to do it. Um, we're going to start with verse. Ver is to see. Verse can mean to see each other. It can. Uh, the little phrase I put uh, that we use a lot, nos vemos, means it's a way of saying goodbye. Nos vemos, we'll see each other sometime in the future. It's a way of saying goodbye because you're saying we'll meet up again. Nos vemos, we'll see each other. So verse can mean to see each other. But many times, verse is used to say somebody looks a certain way and then give a description. Okay, um, vamos a ver. We're going to take a look at some examples before uh, I send you off into practice in smaller groups. So, verse aquí se ve muy bien. Uh, uh, voy a engrandecer esto. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger para que puedan ver mejor. It's very common to hear people saying, oh, se ve muy bien. Wow, she looks really good. She looks really well. Se ve muy bien. See? Uh, somebody looks a certain way. Ah, no se ve muy bien. Doesn't look so hot. Yeah? Not look so even something as simple as bien or mal. Ah, su, se ve. Se ve. Se ve y una descripción. Se ve muy cansado. He looks really tired. Se ve muy cansado porque corrió ocho millas. Because he, he ran eight miles. ¿sí? Se ve muy cansado. Uh, a ver si, ah, aquí tenemos un actor, un actor famoso, sí, uh, uh, aquí en el año 2000 se ve muy joven. In 2000, he looks really young. En 2019 se ve más maduro. He looks more mature, sí, bien, vale. So you can use it with bien, mal, cansado, a description. Joven, a description, uh, uh, viejo, maduro, mature, you know, uh, una descripción. A ver, aquí, uh, aquí se ve. Oh, here's the thing that women like, uh, oh, se ve un poquito gordita. <laughs> ¿Sí? Ah, uh, se ve muy delgada. Wow, she looks really thin. Se ve muy delgada. Se ve muy delgada. Aquí, uh, se ve un poquito flojo. He's looking a little flabby. Sí, se ve un, un poquito flojo. Aquí, uh, se ve muy fuerte. Uy. Se ve muy atlético. Se ve muy musculoso. 
Okay? So, entonces, unos ejemplos. So, you know, those are the descriptions of what we do with Cere. And again, it's going to look really, really simple. It'll be, uy, 18, quiero más, quiero más, quiero más, 24. Uh, so it'll be conjugated like, me veo, te ves. They're going to match up. The verb will be in the form and it will match up with the pronoun. They'll be in the same. That pronoun will be a corresponding form. Se ve, si hablamos de nosotros, Nos vemos. Aquí uh, os veis, you're not going to be using, so we're going to skip that one. Se ven. They look. Se ven. Se ven. Bien. Son las formas. Son las formas de verse. Las formas de verse. Ok. Bueno, a ver. Entonces, a uh, Verse con una descripción, ¿sí? Um, you know, the woman saying to her husband, me, ay, me veo, or her friends, ah, me, me veo muy gorda me, en este traje. I, I look really fat in this outfit or, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, friends will explain when they see a friend down the street, uh, you know, ladies especially will say to each other, oh, te ves muy joven, te ves muy bonita. Wow, you look really pretty. You look really young. Okay, because you did something special to make yourself look a certain way. So uh, those are all ways that we can use verse. Hay alguna pregunta? Is there any kind of a question about this? We're going to pull up the prompt page. And the prompt page has the forms on them. So, you know, you need not copy it down because this prompt page has all of those forms plugged in here. Okay, so, por ejemplo, wow, which is the way you say wow. Wow, wow, Jello tiene unos 50 años, pero se ve muy joven. Yeah. Jayla is about 50, but she looks really young. So we're going to use, you know, you can really use any kind of a physical description. And so here are the prompts. I want you to go in and talk about, uh, you know, finish up the sentence there. Finish up the sentence or create a whole new one. I think by the time we get down to number five, numero cinco, cinco y seis, five and six, uh, uh, you know, you're actually making up a whole sentence. You're finishing up a sentence in one through four. Hay alguna pregunta? Any question before I send you to practice with this or no? Hay alguna pregunta or no? Antes de practicar. No, nada. Okay, fantástico. Mm -hmm. Me imagino por lo menos siete minutos. Diez minutos, ten minutes too long? Yes. No, diez? Is, is that okay or too long? Too long. Too long. Siete, seven, about seven. Mm -hmm. Some people complain I don't give enough time and then I feel really, really guilty. Um, okay. I will send you off into groups of two or three. Uh, vamos a ver aquí. Quizás tres cuartos. Let's see how it split people up. Yeah, I've got groups of three here. Okay, muy bien. Vamos a practicar. Uh, you'll need to hit your join button and I need to hit my timer so that I don't leave it for too long.
Y aquí vienen más y más y más. Muy bien, muy bien, muy bien. Excelente. Vamos a empezar muy pronto. Esperamos a uh, ocho más. O seis o siete más. Aquí vienen. Here we get a few more. Un poquito más. Excelente. Aquí vienen todos. Yay, we got some more people coming on. Make sure you take to take yourselves off of mute as we share some ideas or go through any questions or little bumps that you had in the road. Lo que pasa. Uh, vamos a ver. Okay. Um, vamos a empezar. Let's start. Uh, and make sure you take yourselves off of mute, please. Um, uh, unos ejemplos o preguntas. Any questions or examples you had of these that you want to share? Con todo el grupo. No nada? No. Nada? Okay, bien. Muy claro, fácil, fácil de hacer. Easy to do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excelente. That, that was my hope that it would be easy to do. Well, okay. I remember, but maybe not, but it was easy today. Okay. 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 Bueno, me gusta mucho. Okay. So uh, that is uh, our, uh, we will leave that for now and dig yeah. into some more past tense. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, sí, sí, sí. Dime. Cindy was going. Cindy, were you going to ask that question? I asked this when we were supposed to describe someone, and I said, Andrew Jolie, say they, say calor caliente. Oh, and I'm sorry, I couldn't pick up all that. I had some blips on my end that maybe my Wi Fi. The question was, we're describing someone, and I said, Angelo Jolie, say they, calor caliente. Oh, calor, uh, hot? <laughs> hot, hot color. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, se ve, uh, actually, quite often the way you get that across is buena, buena, se ve muy buena. Uh, or, or, well, yeah, caliente, you could, muy, you know, they do use the word sexy. Se ve muy sexy. They do use that oh. word sexy. That is a borrowed yeah. word, but they do use that. <laughs> So, you know, it may not sound very Spanish, but well, it does when they say sexy. Se ve muy sexy, yes, sí. Uh, así es, okay. Me gusta mucho. Uh, hay, uh, um, hay otro comentario, any other comment? Oh, no. Yeah. Just what, a pedagogy, it's, it's good. The difference between que paso and que pasa. Ah, que pa buena pregunta. Que pasa? What's happening? What's going on? So you're talking about whatever is going on right now. Que pasa? Que pasa? Por, uh, que pasa con el auto? Wow, what's going on with the car? See, ¿Sí? que, que pasa con tu familia? What's going on with your family? Mm -hmm. Right? What's mm -hmm. happening? Literally. Que, uh, que pasó means what happened oh, okay. so it's right in the okay. past. Que pasó? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. ¿Qué pasó? Okay. Uh, and Gracias. actually, de nada, de nada. Uh, we will take a little look at, uh, we, actually, I will share that with you on the share screen right now. We're going to take a little look at that because vale la pena, it is worth it. It is a good illustration of past versus present, okay? Uh, la pregunta, que es una pregunta muy común, ¿qué ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué pasa? What's happening? Uh, what's going on, right? Uh, that is how you ask about what's going on right now because pasa is in present, el presente, ¿sí? And it, it's very general. Man. So pasa doesn't really refer to, uh, you know, a specific person because what is going on, so it's pasa just singular. But uh, because pasar is, uh, pasar is an AR verb and it's a regular verb and it follows very regular rules, here are going to be endings we would have for 
Pretérito Preterite, because when we ask about, um, when we ask about what happened in the past, we would need to take pasar and use one of these. So when you want to say what happened, what occurred, we need to put it into pretérito because pretérito, remember, is the past tense that talks about an event, occurrences, okay? Things that happen, things that move the story forward as they like to say in some of those explanation videos. So, que pasó is going to mean what happened, meaning it's over with, que pasó, right? Uh, and it takes this form here. Pasar drops the AR and it sticks on an O, but an O that has a punch, not paso, uh, which paso is a, a paso es presente. Paso is a present tense verb. And it means I'm passing, like it could mean I'm even coming into a room. Okay. Mm. Uh, not happening, because pasar has more than one definition. It means to happen, to occur. And it literally to pass as in to enter, to go into an area. Um, so it has many, many meanings. But in this context of happening, it's only going to be pasa or paso. And we won't use it as pasada. I mean, you could, what was happening if you're asking for a description, but it's always going to be really framed as either que pasa, what's going on now, or que paso, what happened meaning something that is over. That's the way that verb is always going to shake out. Okay. Um, okay. Fantastico. Uh, otra pregunta. Any other question? Or no? Okay. So, um, we are going to take a look at some of these common verbs. I want to spend some time on past tense and why it happens the way it happens, because it is a really hard thing. We have only a few things in English that really correspond to this same idea of having two different, well, actually we do, we do have the same thing, but well, we use it differently, yeah? Uh, you know, we do say that somebody was walking along the street or somebody used to walk along the street or they walked. We do have those. But, um, you know, in, in Spanish, you really need to take one past tense or the other to indicate that something in the past is a description or is a repeated action, which would be imperfecto, those aba aba or ia ia verbs, versus um, uh, preterito preterit, which again tells us that things happened in a certain order, and so it it moves the action of the story along. And preterito always tells about an event, something that was over and done with. It's not descriptive in, in any way. Um, so we're going to take a look at, again, some verbs that are really common. We're going to have a short verb that talks about tener, which is really common, uh, and which tense would make more sense in the past. And uh, we'll look at some practice pages with different things with preterito. Right now, hey, you, Abba, you said something's an Abba, Abba. On the si. slides that you showed us, the only one that says ABBA would be a star. Or is that common for a lot of them, though, to end with ABBA? What did you mean? Yes. Oh, OK. Gracias. Thank you. OK, so here's what I mean. Here we go. So let's look at the big forms first. And then we're going to look at like common again. verbs second. OK, so preterito. If you're talking about preterito, uh, preterito, preterito, what they call preterite, is always equivalent to, uh, you know, talked, walked, cooked, skated, drove. Wow, drove doesn't use ed in English to indicate past. Um, wrote, uh, you know, those are just examples of what it would mean in English. Uh, I, I vacuumed, I cleaned, I, uh, I read which looks the same as read. Wow, that's confusing in English. 
Okay, but anyway, Preterito tells about an event. Here are things that happened. And, and the endings we're gonna have are for regular verbs, AR endings will have these endings. A aste o with a punch, o with an accent mark. Um, amos, and we'll skip the vosotros, and aron, okay? Uh, preterito, preterite, ear and I are gonna share the same endings. And they'll be, instead of e, they'll be e with an accent mark. Iste, io, imos, and ieron, okay? So let's look at just the preterite side of it first. We're gonna take a couple examples to see how that happens, how that looks uh, once we take an example of a very, very tip, some very, very typical verbs. And I have to be careful in the verbs I pick because sadly some common verbs are very, very, very irregular. Preterite is a hard tense to use in Spanish, not because of those endings I showed you, but because there are a, a very uh, large number of verbs in Spanish that don't follow that pattern I showed you. They are irregulars. Preterite has a huge quantity of irregulars in Spanish. Um, so that makes it kind of difficult to learn preterite tense because just the mechanics of learning the correct endings becomes kind of a chore. So we're gonna focus just on like AR verbs that would, what they would look like in preterito to tell you an event. Okay, so let's take manejar. Manejar to drive, right? To drive a car, because we talk about driving around places all the time, right? So uh, to say I drove, we're gonna wanna change all these to mean not I drive, he drives, they drive, uh, she drives, they drive, but we wanna say drove, which wow, already is like weird in English, not drived, but drove. So we're going to take uh, manejar, we get rid of the AR, maneje, maneje, I drove, maneje, I drove, maneje, ascacel, eh, el sábado, maneje, ascacel, el sábado, I drove to Scacel on Saturday, uh, manejamos, yay, here is the ding, 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 yay verb, because the <laughs> amos is the same in presente, is the same in preterito. Well, how do you know if it's past or present? You know it from the context. So amos is amos is amos is amos. Yeah, it's both presente and it's preterito. So uh, the good thing is you don't have to memorize a different form, uh, but, uh, Manejar for tú is going to become manejaste. ¿A dónde manejaste? Where did you drive? See? And you drove. I'll put that in there. Uh, he or she drove. Manejó. Manejo means I'm doing it right now. Manejo. But manejo, when I punch the O, and it's really important to punch the O, manejo, manejo, okay? Manejo, he or she drove. Or again, it can be usted as well. So there's a typical AR verb that is regular. One last one, manejaron, manejaron, they drove. Or for ustedes, you guys drove. Okay, there is an AR verb that is perfectly regular and wonderful and easy. Let's take a look at one more that is perfectly regular and wonderful and easy. Uh, uh, let's take uh, ba, 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 cocinar, cocinar, to cook, right? Or better yet, ooh, let's take a shorter one. Tomar, to eat, drink, ooh, drive, drink, uh, take something, right? Tomar, tomar, right? I took the bus. I took a taxi, I had a cup of coffee. I had a cup of coffee, okay. They're gonna use tomar for that a lot. So tomar is one of our, our most highly used verbs. Uh, tome, tome una taza de café, tome una taza de café, tome 
Tomé el metro, tomé el metro en uh, Madrid. I took the subway. So, uh, um, tomé will be I took, I ate or drank, all right? Depends on the context of how we're using tomar. Tomamos, yay, yeah, yeah, okay, yay. <laughs> yay, it is great. No, I shouldn't have it as yeah, I should have it as yay. Uh, uh, tomamos, uh, again, amos is amos, it's, it's both present and past. Tomaste, tomaste, you took eight, etc. okay? Uh, and now I've got to make sure I punch that last, oh, tomo, tomo, uh, he or she or usted took, etc. all those meanings, right? Tomo, tomo. Uh, el estudiante tomo el autobús escolar. The student took the school bus. Okay, el estudiante tomó sus libros. The student took his books. Uh, um, el, el cliente tomó su paquete. The, uh, the customer took his package. And then we'll have tomaron. They, or the form for ustedes, you guys, uh, took, etc. all those meetings. Okay, so tomé, tomaste, tomó. Tomamos, tomaron. So anytime you see these AR verbs in this preterito, it means, oh, it happened, it's done, it happened, it's done, it happened, it's done, right? Okay. Um, let's take a look at ERIR verbs. ERIR verbs share the same, uh, share the same forms. ER and IR verbs don't are not different in the kinds of endings they use for preterito. They share the same forms. So let's take uh, something like escribir. Escribir, to write. Okay. Escribí. Escribí. Uh, I wrote. Right. Uh, escribimos. We wrote. Uh, escribiste. And notice this iste, this iste, iste, iste thing is, is the two form. Iste or aste, iste or aste, right? Uh, you wrote. Escribió. And we have to punch the ending, escribió. He or she or the usted form wrote. And then the they form will be escribieron, escribieron. So, you know, these, wow, once you get to manejaron, escribieron, wow, those are kind of long endings, aren't they? Those suffixes used to create preterite get to sound kind of long once you get to the ellos se as ustedes form. They or ustedes wrote. Okay. Okay, uh, and we're going to see an ER example, beber, to drink, and I keep getting dry, wow, my fingers just want to do that, uh, to drink, and usually this is going to be referring to either water or alcohol, one of those two, bebí, bebí demasiado, I drank too much, bebí demasiado, <laughs> I drank too much. And nobody's ever going to be talking about water if they give you that sentence. Maybe demasiado, they're going to mean they just, you know, yeah. Uh, but notice, bebemos would be the presente. Bebemos would be the presente. But bebimos, it's going to have the imos ending. Ear and I are sure that imos. So, ooh, you always know the difference between bebemos, presente, and bebimos. But escribimos, escribimos, they share, right? But Bebemos, bebimos, you do have a difference. Uh, right, bebiste, bebiste, you drank. Uh, bebió, he or she or usted uh, uh, drank and bebieron. They or the ustedes form, right? Because we're going to share them. Okay, yeah. so. ER and IR verbs are going to use the exact same endings 
And that's how they'll sound. Baby, baby, stay baby. Bebimos, bebieron, right? Escribir, escribí, escribiste, escribió, escribimos, escribieron. Okay? Um, bien. So, we've got our endings up here. E, aste, o, but we gotta, we gotta punch these. When it's got an accent mark, it's really important. It means you punch that little more. And I kind of emphasize it, but you know, in regular speech, you're gonna have to really <laughs> listen for it. Uh, amos and Aaron, right? There are examples of how we tag them on. We always take off the AR ending, right? Or the ER ending or the IR ending. Uh, tome, tomaste, tomo, tomamos, tomaron, bien, bien, bien. Okay, and escribí. Escribiste, escribió. And, you know, we'll get into some more practice of this, but this is an introduction. Now, are you going to be able to remember all these new conjugations all the time? No, but not necessarily right now because it's all new to you and you need time to actually practice these. But when you listen or when you read, uh, and especially once you get into getting some of these little books or, or, or reading articles of any, any kind, um, uh, you can tell right away they're saying this thing happened, this thing happened, this thing happened. So the most important thing for you right now is not necessarily to be able to speak and use these conjugations, but to recognize them when people talk to you or when it is written out. Okay. The, the way to approach this right now is to recognize, oh, that's a past. Oh, that's a past. Just recognize what it is. Because to use it is going to take some substantial practice. Okay. So there is one side of it. Now we've got, it's going to let me scroll up. It's not going to let me scroll up. Um, Let's look at the Abba, Abba, Abba thing. Okay. And then we'll look at what that means. Oops. Sounds like you're that singing group. Abba. Abba, Abba, it is. That's how a lot of people remember it. Imperfecto does not move the action of the story forward. It does not. Well, what the heck is it good for? Okay. It is good for things. Uh, whenever you read or hear things and you hear preterito, you know, oh, that happened. Oh, that happened. Oh, that happened. Right? But when you hear any of these endings for imperfecto, you know they're describing or they're saying something was a habit. It was something that happened a lot. So the easiest way to think of it in English terms so that your brain can kind of get the difference is that in English, the most common, not the only, but the most common way for us to express the idea of the imperfecto is to say that somebody was doing something or people were doing something or to say used to do something. Those are the two things, used to do or was were doing. I'm going to give you some examples in English. If what you mean in English is, wow, the workers were cleaning the street. Uh, the cashier was helping the customer. If that's what you mean to say, you need imperfecto. If what you mean to say is, I used to like dolls when I was a little girl. I used to climb trees when I was a little kid. We went to the park all the time. All the time isn't a set period of time. We went to the park all the time when I was little. Then you need imperfecto. What you mean determines whether you're gonna use Preterito or imperfecto? What so they mean? cleaned the street is preterito. Preterito, clean. But, right. but they were cleaning. 
is imperfect. If what you mean, if what your brain is like, well, they were cleaning the streets, that is imperfecto, okay? So imperfecto is great on many, many fronts because first of all, it has hardly any irregular forms. So you can really predict except for three verbs, you can predict always what imperfecto is going to look like. An AR a verb is always going to get aba, 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 aba forms. Always. That's what it uses. So anytime you hear, and that is really, a, for English speakers, that is a distinct sound. Aba, 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 some ba, 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 yeah. And that is really distinct, and your ears are going to pick that up. So any here at the time you hear an a ah or an ia verb, it is likely to be one of these, okay? Aba, abas, aba, abamos, abais, aban. And in imperfecto, yo and el e a usted, those have the same exact ending. There is no different ending for yo. I mean, the ending you use for yo is the exact same ending that you use to talk about him or her, you know, to talk about he or she did something or used to do something, okay? Um, so there's no difference. These have asterisks because imperfecto shares the same form between yo and el e a usted, okay? But er and i verbs, again, like preterito, they share the same conjugations, always, always. And they will be, again, ia, and they're all accented, ia. Ia, Ias, Ia, Iamos, Iais, Ian. Okay. So again, yo and el e a usted will share all the time. And again, what I want you to do is maybe not be able to say all the conjugations yourself, but to recognize when you hear it or read it, they're talking about the past and they're either describing or they're saying used to do it a lot. So there's a, you know, there's a difference between, um, uh, ooh, when I'm trying to pick a verb that's not irregular, uh, pasé, pasé por el parque, pasé por el, pasé, I'm using pasar, pasé por el parque el sábado. I went through the park, I passed through the park, but I went through the park, pasé por el parque el sábado. Pasé por el parque, you automatically know because I use pasé that it's an over and done with action. It was a one-time thing. Pasé por, por el parque. But if I say pasaba por el parque, then I mean, I'm saying I used to go through the park or I was going through the park. And that changes, that nuances the action. Instead of it being a happened, happened, Happen, pasaba turns it into, ooh, this was going on. Okay, so uh, that is a distinction we do not, uh, well, well, we do have, but we don't think about it in English. We don't think about it. Let's look at how these typical verbs are going to look how they will typically look. We're going to take some things that are imperfecto, that are all imperfecto, and they're very, very easy to recognize. Muy faciles, and I can pick any verb and make it a used to, used to, hablar, to speak. So if I want to say I used to speak, I used to talk with somebody. I used to talk with all of my colleagues at my old job, right? <laughs> It'll take hablar. Uh, uh, hablaba, hablaba. <laughs> it sounds funny. I know, wow, kids would just always laugh when they heard this, hablabas. Uh, you know, because we have that phrase, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, people love that. Um, Hablaba, same thing. And now we're going to get a punch. Hablábamos. And hablabais, and we've got a hunch down here, and hablaban. Okay, but I want you to notice we get an S on the tu ending. 
We get an N on the they form. We've got a little naked vowel hanging off the end there, right, for these two. And that most is always going to be a we. So there are certain patterns, yeah? Uh, let's take a look at another one that, oh my gosh, my 15-year-olds love this one. Trabajar. Trabajar. <laughs> And yeah, your brain can just see where that's going to go. Trabajaba. Trabajaba. <laughs> I used to work. Trabajaba en el colegio. Trabajaba en el colegio. I used to work. I'm not saying how many years. I'm just saying I used to work. Trabajaba en el colegio uh, aquí en Bampton Hills. Uh, a ver. So I just put an S on the end to make the two. Trabajabas. Trabajabas, I just put an S on the end. Que facil. Trabajaba. Yay. Yo and él a usted share the same form. So, trabajaba. Uh, uh, mi esposo trabajaba. Uh, uh, mi esposo trabajaba en, en Scottsdale. My husband was working in Scottsdale, but I'm not telling you how long I say he was doing that. And then, trabajábamos. Trabajábamos. We were working or we used to work. Trabajaban. Trabajaban. They used to work. So, hablar, these will mean they were speaking, they were talking, or they used to talk. Trabajar in imperfecto will mean uh, uh, trabajaba, trabajabas, all of those will mean somebody was working or somebody used to work. If that is what you mean in English, this is the tense you will hear, okay? A ver, let's take a look at some uh, easy, easy ER verbs. Comer, ah, comer, sí, claro, comer. Uh, comer, comía. Uh, Comías. Again, all I do is tag an S onto the end. Comía is for yo, comía is for él, ella, usted. So I have no difference whatsoever. Uh, the plural forms, I get comíamos, we were eating or we used to eat. Comían, uh, they were eating or they used to eat. Okay, all right. Um, so, Again, if you mean somebody was doing something or somebody used to, this is the type of verb you need, okay? It gives background information, but it does not move the story forward. Uh, let me give you an example of how when you hear somebody speaking or you read something, they might combine both like a half of a sentence uh, in imperfecto, half of it in pretérito, how it affects the idea of what is going on. Uh, mm, comíamos, comíamos la cena juntos cuando entró nuestro vecino. This is something you might hear somebody say. And here is what it will mean. We were eating dinner together when our neighbor entered. Mm or came in, because you know in English, a lot of times entered is sort of formal, when our neighbor came in. Okay, so let's think about was doing or used to do, comíamos la cena, we were eating, we, it was going on, going on, going on. Oh, now something happened to interrupt. An outsider came into our house. Cuando entró nuestro vecino, when our neighbor came in. And there is an event that interrupted our nice little dinner. Our dinner was going on, going on, going on. Whoop, somebody came in. 
So when you hear somebody speaking or you read something, you can immediately tell from the tense that's going on if it was happening or if it, boom, happened like that. That is both the beauty and the difficult part, but it's, it's beautiful because you immediately know how fast an action was if it was like, going on, going on, going on, or if it was boom, happened. The boom happened is always a preterito. Always. Okay? okay? That is something that takes a long time to get used to. So if you feel like this is complicated, welcome to the club. Everybody feels like that is very complicated, but the more examples you start to see, the more it will make sense. So we're gonna take a look at some of these things. I had sent this to you, but I didn't really give you a lot of verbal explanation. We're gonna look at these very common verbs of uh, haber and ser and estar and tener uh, and ir too. We're gonna to try to get into ir a little bit because these are verbs that are used a lot. These are verbs you learned first in Spanish in present when you first learned Spanish. These are the most common. People use this all the time in conversation kind of verbs, okay? But if I need to use them in past, what happens? Because these are common verbs and they happen like, wow, they're used, I don't know, so often in common conversation. In 15 minutes, you're gonna hear one of these verbs, 15 minutes of somebody talking almost always. So haber is most frequently going to take this form in past. So that's why it gets an asterisk. Haber means is what we, is the verb we use to take that impersonal idea of there is or there are. We take it from this verb. And I is what you first learn. I, hay una pluma. Yeah, right, see? Hay uh, un periódico. There's a newspaper. I can use it for plurals. Hay unos libros. There are some books. So I can use it for there is, there are. And this is the nice one to take first because it doesn't change form. There's only one form. It's either I or it's a past. And the past is usually going to be había. Because the vast majority of the time when you use haber in the past to say there was or there were, you're talking about what something looked like. And description, what something looked like, is always imperfecto. Because how something looked is not an event. Okay? So, uh, había. Había, there was or there were, is usually used in imperfecto. Very, very rarely is it used in preterito. So if you want to say there was or there were, this is a verb that you have to know and it's all you need to know, había. And it's regular because we take the er off of haber and we use the ia ending, había. Había muchas nubes, there were a lot of clouds. When I'm saying there were a lot of clouds, that's not an event, it's not happening. <laughs> it's just saying what was. So it's a description. So it's imperfecto. Yeah. Había muchas nubes. Otro ejemplo. Había muchos carros en uh, la autopista uh, 101. There were a lot of cars on the 101. <laughs> Ooh, había muchos carros. Cerca de la casa de mi vecino. There were a lot of cars near my neighbor's house. Ah, oh, fuimos, fuimos al norte. Fuimos a Prescott. Fuimos a Payson. Había muchos árboles. There were lots of trees. Mm. There were lots of cars. There were lots of trees. What's happening? Nothing. <laughs> That's not an event. Even if I say, mm, Fui al parque, fui al parque el sábado. I went to the, I went to the park. Fui al parque el sábado. Había mucha gente. There were a lot of people. Even though 
there were a lot of people you kind of like in English, you might think, well, things were happening. Yeah, things were happening. But if I just say there were a lot of people, I'm just painting a picture for you, crowded. And there were a lot of people is not an event. So Avia is going to be used like 90% of the time to say there was or there were. Make sense? Hmm. Aria is just a description. There was or there were. There were people. Wow, there was a ton of paper. There was a stack of papers on my desk. That's just telling what it looked like, right? Uh, there were insects. Oh, there were insects all over the place. Aria, aria, muchos insectos. I'm just, I'm painting a picture of what it was like. Yikes. Yeah, we, we hate that feeling, right? So, Aria, most of the time. You probably, I, I hesitate to even mention that uvo is the past because you don't hear it very much. You hear it because of an event that went on. So I might say, I could say, hubo un accidente, there was an accident, because now that's not a description. An accident is an event. Hubo una boda, there was a wedding. Hmm. Uva, hubo una reunión, there was a meeting, because a meeting is an event, a wedding is an event, right? Un accidente, that's an event. Even un incendio, a fire, that's an event, <laughs> okay? But anything else, but you know, wow, think of it, that's kind of limited. How about there was no ice cream? No había helado? No había helado. Right, there was no ice cream, no había helado. There was no dessert, no había postre, no había postre. Okay. There was no fruit, no había fruta. Fruit okay. isn't an event, <laughs> it didn't occur. <laughs> but you, you can get that idea real fast, can't you? No había, no, no había comida. Well, there was no food. Hubo una boda, there was a wedding, pero no había comida, but there was no food. Oh, there's a real distinction. Wedding, it's an event, it's a happening. But food, it doesn't happen. Just there, yeah, right? So when we use I to say there was, there were, we're just talking, we're painting a picture for people. That's all we're doing. An imperfecto always paints a picture. It paints a picture, okay? Bien? Yeah, in this book, I was trying to read a little bit of the past and he says, no había un auto nuevo. There was no new car. They didn't give it to him. Right. No había. It didn't exist, it wasn't out there. Wow, there was a, you know, the kid who goes out, he thinks he's going to get his big 16 year, oh, your 16th birthday. I'm going to walk out. There's going to be a car. It's going to have a bow on the top, just like in the commercials. Ooh, no había ningún auto. There was no car whatsoever. <laughs> no había un auto. There was no car. Car is not an event. It's just either out there on the curb or it's not. Bien, okay. Mari, let's take a look at ser. This one is a little more problematic. I'm going to make this bigger. Ser is almost always irregular. There are hard, oh, there are very few tenses. There are a few. There are a few tenses that are regular for ser, but not a whole lot. So we had soy eres es somos soy son. Okay, bien. So, wow, with this one, it, this is one of the hardest ones to distinguish properly, but it'll depend on the idea you want to convey. And, and, and we won't focus on this yet, but we are gonna take a look at era because you're gonna see era a lot. Era is one of, the, one of the three irregulars for imperfecto. It is not an aba aba, it is not an ia ia. Ser is one of the three irregulars for imperfecto. So it becomes era, eras, ah, but it's got an S at the end for tu, era, eramos, eras, eran. So era is what you 
use when you mean somebody was a certain way, like you're describing them. Oh, because it imperfecto is for descriptions. Um, or how somebody used to be. Ah, uh, oh, mis estudiantes eran muy inteligentes. My students were really intelligent. Mis estudiantes eran muy inteligentes. I'm describing what they were like. Descriptions are not events. It has to go into imperfecto. Um, uh, 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 uh. So, you know, anything that describes. Uh, once in a while, you will see, well, yeah, a little more frequent, more frequent than haber. You may hear somebody using uh, ser in preterito. So here's our, our example of ser in imperfecto. Mi abuelo era muy amable. My grandpa was very kind. Well, kind is a description. So it's era, used to be, he used to be that way. He was kind, he used to be kind, right? It's a description. So descriptions are imperfecto. But you might hear people use this with some kind of a limit. And we'll give you an example here in a moment. Uh, and then ser looks totally, totally bizarre for imperfecto. Fui, fuiste, fue, fuimos, fueron. And now it's got to have a limit. So I don't use these fui, fuiste, fue to describe somebody. Because it doesn't work. Because preterito, preterite for ser, even though it's like really weird and it sure does not look like it came from ser, it starts with an S because these all begin with F. How bizarre are these? Okay, well, we use them when we have a limit. So let me give you an example. Um, Lincoln fue presidente. Um, or por, por, por uh, seis años. Lincoln was president for six years. Is president a description? It tells what he did, right? It tells, it, it identifies what role he had. Lincoln fue presidente por seis años. Am I limiting it? I mm -hmm. am. I'm, I'm putting it in a little box tied up with a bow that says seis años, six years, okay? So you might hear preterito, preterite used with ser this way. But in storytelling, in storytelling, right now at the stage you are in, you are probably gonna hear this starred form more. So what I'm trying to show you here is what's gonna be more common conversationally for you guys at the stage you are here. This is going to be more common. Talking about describing how people looked or how they were. This is probably going to be more common. This is what you're going to hear more. Estar. This is going to be more common right now for the stage you're in right now. For how you feel or where you are, always use the verb estar. And no matter what tense time frame you're looking at, that little stupid rhyme holds true. For how you feel or where you are, always use the verb estar. So, okay, if I want to say somebody was or some people were a certain way, how they felt, how they felt, health or emotionally, that's a description. It's going to be imperfecto. Where somebody was, where something was located, that doesn't, it's not an event. It's going to be imperfecto most of the time. Most of the time. If I want to say uh, the church was on the corner, Church was just there. When did it start being there? When it finished, it just was. Yeah, you get the idea. It's, it's 
When I'm talking about location, usually it's a description. So it's imperfecto. Imperfecto is sacred for description, okay? So estar, thankfully, is very, very regular. Estara, estaras, estara, same form. Estábamos, uh, estaran. So most of the time when we're using estar at your stage, we're going to be using imperfecto. Uh, estábamos en la oficina, we're, we were in the office. I'm just telling where we were located. Estábamos en la oficina. Now, there is a preterito. You need kind of a time limit. Estar is very, very, very irregular. It does not follow. This is one of the oddball irregular preterites, it does not follow the chart I have shown you so far, because estar is not regular. And a V comes from out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> from, because there's no V in estar, but these are the endings that they use for uh, estar in preterito. But most people conversationally, you will hear that less often then you will hear imperfecto. Because what do people talk about most often? Where something was located or how somebody felt. And that's description. It's gonna usually, for your purposes right now, be estara. That doesn't mean that these verbs down here aren't used, but for where you're starting now, these are gonna be the ones you'll hear more. Somebody's gonna say, I was tired, I was sick. They were happy. And that's what they're going to use. Okay. We're going to take a look at tener. And I think, oh, wow, I was hoping to get to ir. We're probably not going to have time. We're going to show you a little video pretty soon about tener. Tener, the vast majority of the time, is going to be imperfecto. It's going to be these ia endings. Because you're going to say somebody had. They, they had this item, they had a certain kind of clothing, uh, they had something, they had a wallet in their pocket, I had, I had my purse, they had their books, you know, had is in most cases, gonna be these imperfectos, and they, it is very, very regular. So they're gonna be all ER verb, ia, ia, ia endings. Tenia, tenias, you need an S for tu. Tenia, teníamos, we had. Tenia is only in Spain, but tenían, they had. Uh, when you're saying somebody owned something, they had something, it's gonna be this one here starred. There is a, pa a preterito, a preterite, but look how bizarre, funky, weird that is. A V, again, comes in from nowhere. And it changes meaning. Tener does not mean had in preterito. Tener in preterito no longer means had. It means got something, received something. Event. Oh. Shoot, yeah. So we're going to take a look at. Ooh, don't miss that. It disappeared. We're going to take a little video and I'm going to pause it. We're only going to watch part of the video, but this part of the video is going to illustrate with tener, specifically with tener, how tener is used when we're talking in the past. And it's going to be a really silly story. Uh, because that will stick in your head. Um, ba, 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 ba. Don't be that. Don't be that. Where'd it go? Ah, aquí. Here we go. Uh, we're going to take a look because he's going to give you not a bunch of rules, but examples of how he's going to use tener. And I need to kind of get to the point of the video where, perdón, he actually starts to tell the story.
Uh, remember, we use tener also to say that some, uh, with all those idioms, like, uh, so we're gonna use tener to say, I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was 20 years old. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use tener with all those idioms, which are all descriptions. So. Videos en español para aprender español. I'll try to Con put Juan, it. conmigo. Mira esta frase. ¿Cómo se dice? Cuando tuve. Cuando... Let's think about this. What makes more sense if you're... Because you're describing something if you're talking about age. Description. Cuando tenía ocho años o cuando tuve ocho años. Tenía. And don't be fooled by that number thinking it's limiting because it's not. It's a description. Tenia. Anytime you want to talk about I was a certain age or he was a certain age, it's going to be tenia. Boom. End of story. No deciding. Cuando tuve 18 años o cuando tenía 18 años. Pues esto es lo que vamos a ver en el vídeo de hoy. No te vayas. No te Okay, we'll skip that part. O cuando estoy probando. Oh, okay. He's going to talk Venga, about a hat. Empezamos. Ah, hola. ¿Qué tal? Estoy, estoy probándome este sombrero. I'm trying on this hat. Probar is to try on. Estoy probando. I am trying on. Estoy probándome este sombrero, que es un sombrero muy viejo. Es un sombrero muy viejo. It's a really old hat. Que. Eh, Yo tenía cuando era, cuando era joven, porque... Ah, este es un sombrero muy viejo que yo tenía cuando era joven. This is a very old hat that I had when I was young. Had, we don't know how long you had it. I had this hat. That's not an event. You just had it. That's not an event. When I was young, that's a description. So, imperfecto. Un sombrero que tenía cuando era joven. Que, sí, sí. Ahora, ahora no, llevo, no llevo sombrero, pero cuando era más joven, cuando era muy joven, cuando era joven, <laughs> llevaba sombrero muy a menudo, sí. Ah, when I was young, I used to wear a hat Muy a menudo just means often. a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. often. Really often. Muy a menudo is really often. So when I was young, description, I used to wear. So he's saying this happened all the time. And besides was doing something or, you, well, this is used to. I used to wear. Meaning he did it over and over and over again. I don't know how many times. Just a bunch of times. All the time. Sí, sí, solía llevar sombrero y gafas de sol, sí. Eh, así, así salía yo a la calle muy a menudo. <laughs> así salía. Uh, thus, así es thus. So, uh, oh, this way, like this. Salía. I used to go out. Salir is to leave, go out. I used to go out on the street. I used to walk on out to the street. Salía yo a la calle muy a menudo. Con esta pinta, sí. Y, pero ahora, ahora no me está bien, pero antes sí. Cuando era joven, cuando... Cuando... And he's thinking like somebody who only knows English. He's... Uh, no sé, sí, cuando era muy joven, a los 18 años, a los 18 años, pues eh, siempre llevaba, siempre llevaba el sombrero y tenía, tenía mucho éxito con la... Tenía, oh, tenía mucho éxito con las chicas. I was really successful with the girls. <laughs> I got lucky with the girls. Tenía mucho éxito. Con, éxito means success. I was successful with the girls. Chicas. <laughs> Porque yo no era muy guapo, ¿vale? I wasn't really handsome. No era muy guapo. I was not good looking. Ahora tampoco. <laughs> Ahora tampoco, not now either. Pero cuando tenía, 
Now he's pausing and thinking like an English person. A los 18 años, a los 18 años, pues eh, llevaba sombrero y cuando me ponía sombrero When I used to put a hat on Las chicas, las chicas decían Oh, qué guapo The girls used to say <laughs> Oh, handsome Not they said like one time and done But the girls used to say oh, How cute <laughs> Y era verdad, cuando yo me ponía sombrero era muy guapo When I put, when I used to put on a hat I was good, I was good looking guy Y, y y gafas de sol también, yeah. ¿vale? Y tenía mucho too. éxito con las chicas. No sé por qué mm, cambiaba mi personalidad. It changed my personality. It, it used to, yeah, it altered me. Era mucho más, um, mucho más extrovertido. I was much more outgoing. You might say extroverted, you'd probably say outgoing. I was much more outgoing. Me sentía mucho más seguro. <laughs> I felt much more assured of myself. Me sentía, I used to feel. He's describing how he felt, how you felt. Feelings are not an event. They started when, we don't know. They ended when, we don't know. Uh, I felt much more sure of myself. <laughs> De mí mismo, contaba chistes. Era, era el, el... I used to tell jokes, contaba tis. El centro de atención de la... I was the center of attention. And he's just describing what fiestas. Like. Eh, no sé, mm, tenía mucha gente alrededor que, que, que hablaba conmigo, Juan, qué que divertido eres. Sí, yo era, era muy divertido. Cuando yo te... A los 18 años, <ríe> yo era muy... And, and he's avoiding tener. A los 18 años, at 18 years old. Really, what you can plug in here is cuando tenía ocho años. And he's pausing. He's avoiding tener like an English person would avoid tener, maybe. Because they can't decide, is it tenía or tuve? No, it's always tenía dieciocho años. Muy divertido y muy guapo. Y tenía mucho éxito con las chicas. Y ahora que, ahora que me eh, he encontrado este sombrero, hoy he encontrado este sombrero, por casualidad, hacía muchos años que no, que no me lo ponía. Y... Oh, I haven't worn this thing for a whole bunch of years. Hacía mucho, it, it made many years that I did not put this on. Me lo ponía, but I didn't put this on myself. Ponerse, put clothing on. And, you know, he's talking about a hat, so ponerse. Y ahora, pues voy a probar, <laughs> voy a probar si ahora... Puedo salir a la calle y tener éxito como tenía antes, cuando yo tenía... Oh, and I want to have, I want to be successful like I used, to. I used to be. Like I used to be because of tener éxito. Como tenía antes, like I used to have. Tenía... Cuando tenía tuve. ¿Cómo se dice tenía o tuve 18 años? Ay, esto, esto del español, porque yo lo debería saber. Yo soy profesor de español y a veces tengo estas dudas. A ver, a ver, a ver. Cuando yo tenía 18 años... He's teasing that he doesn't know this, because of course he knows it. But somebody learning Spanish ver, has to stop tuve, and think about this. Tuve es para acciones. Tuve es para acciones. Tuve in that past form means it happened, an action. ¿No? Tú ves para acciones, ¿no? Correr, caminar, comer, beber. There are all things that are actions that might be, oh, these things happened in a typical day. Desayunar, cenar, acciones, ¿vale? Y tenía, es para hábitos, ¿no? Para costumbres y para describir y para... So here is what tenías for. Habitos, things that you did habitually, right? Uh, and descriptions. And 18 years old is a description. Anytime you're talking about age in the past, it's a description. We use tenía. Para describir, vale. Entonces, yo estoy hablando de mi edad. Yo estoy hablando de mi edad. Estoy hablando de los años, de los años cuando yo era joven. ¿Eso qué es? Una descripción. ¿Es una descripción? Sí, <ríe> sí, es una descripción. Estoy describiendo, estoy describiendo 
los años, los años, mi edad, hace tiempo, ¿no? Antes, en el pasado, ¿vale? Entonces, cuando yo, cuando yo tenía, cuando yo tenía, pues sí, sí, exactamente, cuando yo tenía 18 años, era muy guapo, muy sexy, muy... <risa> muy divertido y I was a fun guy. era el centro de atención de las fiestas y ahora ahora quizás ahora quizás voy a salir a la calle con este sombrero porque creo que quizás el secreto de mi éxito cuando era joven The secret of my success when I was young cuando era joven era el sombrero, uh, it was the hat. el sombrero, it was the hat. si yo ahora me pongo sombrero, voy a la calle y tendré también mucho éxito con las chicas, ¿no? Bueno, pues voy a ver, voy a salir, voy a salir y voy a ver qué pasa en el próximo vídeo. En el próximo, en el yeah. próximo video. I'm going to see what happens. So there you got a little description, a, a, a little actual story in context uh, using tener, right? Say that you had something doesn't really have a beginning and end. Uh, to say that you were a certain age doesn't have a beginning and end. When we talk about age, whether it's young, old, or saying an actual numerical thing with age, it's tener using that description thing. So how I want you to look at this is just seeing how that is used and knowing, and I'm going to send you the link for that so you can watch it again. Um, uh, seeing how we plug it into the context of a description. So don't try to memorize every form of uh, these, but know that when we're talking about the past, imperfecto is going to describe or paint a picture or um, uh, talk about habits, things that used to happen and we don't know how often, just a bunch of times, a lot, very vague, okay? But Preterito always tells you this happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened, it's an event and it's over, and it's over, and it's over, bien? Okay, vale? So where, what I want you to get uh, when you, uh, uh, if you decide to go into a book or, you know, if you just even listen to people talking, which one of these tenses they pick, I want you to just recognize, oh, they're talking in the past. Oh, they're talking in the past. Just recognize it for now, not necessarily pushing yourself to speak and use it, but recognize that it means, oh, that was, they're not talking about now, they're talking about what happened or what, what something was like. Está bien, are we good? Sí. Muy bien. Um, if you need a suggestion for a, a book, for a book for next session, email me one-on-one -on -one if, if you feel kind of tentative about what's a good pick. Um, but, you know, tell me what your goal is and I can help guide you if, if you, um, you know, still are feeling kind of unsure of that because we're going to have a little hiatus here about what three weeks tres tres semanas wow i think we've got about three weeks off yeah see todo está bien all good and fall we actually we'll have a new batch of some new people in so we're actually going to go back and also dig up review some old things that are kind of simple ideas but things that kind of will tweak and make you sound uh a little uh more confident with Oh, simple things like we're going to review some things with numbers. We're going to review some things with even when to use el, la, los, or las, or when not to, like, because they don't correspond really to what we do in English. So, you know, we'll kind of mix a little bit of everything. Está bien? Sí. 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 Excelente, excelente. Really, really, really great. Um, we will, uh, if you have any questions in between sessions, feel free to email me during the hiatus. That is perfectly okay. Bien? Sí. Gracias. Sí, gracias. Uh, y gracias. Fue, sí. Ah, y bueno, fue un placer. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. I hope to see you guys come fall. 
and have yes. a good little break. A lot of you will probably be maybe taking some time to travel or relax or get work done around the house. Look, I say whatever. <laughs> the kids off to school, or the grandkids off to school. If you were in that boat, yeah. Eso es. Entonces, pero nos vemos.